Hi, I'm Brian from Simply Brian Enterprises and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the homework solution for Top Tech Boys Raspberry Pi Pico series, lesson number 15. In this lesson, we're going to be using our RGB LED attached to the Pico and taking direction from the user via keyboard input. Because we're using the keyboard as our only input, the hardware is fairly simplified this week. We're just using an RGB LED attached to the Pico and in this case under my ping pong ball diffuser. You can't see them, but there's 220 ohm resistors on each color channel. So let's take a look at the program and see how this is going to work. Find my mouse here, I apologize for that. All right, how many colors would you like? So the homework assignment was to ask the users how many colors and then prompt for input for each color. So let's say we're gonna do three colors and our first color is going to be green and our second color is going to be red and our third color is going to be yellow and we get trust me that's green red and yellow and it's really hard to get a good color balance even though i have a spotlight pointing at it and the diffuser it's really difficult to get uh, the correct colors to show but in person the colors are actually quite vibrant so what we have here is, as the, as the program was running, we put out the user entered color name. And then just for kind of a debugging or, or informational purposes, I put out the RGB value as well. So green, we did red zero, green 255, blue zero. Red, of course, is 255, zero, zero. And yellow, as we learned in the previous lesson, a good yellow is 255, 128, zero. And so you can see those outputted. So now we're being asked again, how many colors would we like? Uh, this time, let's just do two. I want to do magenta and I want to do blue. Oh, that's right. Blue is for special occasions. I wonder if our little trick works to use sudo to give me blue. You think it'll work? There we go. It will accept that. Super user access is granted. So that's you know pretty straightforward, but one of the challenges when taking user input is trying to predict strange or invalid things that users might do. So let's do some invalid things. I'm gonna pick three colors. And the first one is gonna be all uppercase red. The second is gonna be kind of a mixed case yellow. And the third one is going to be uh, purple. Well, it doesn't know what purple is. Let's try again. And notice it's just asking for color number three. It says, oh, purple doesn't exist. Try something else. Let's try magenta this time. I think magenta's in the list. All right, so we have red, we have yellow, and we have magenta. And notice that my colors output are the same as I entered them. All uppercase red, mixed case yellow, lowercase magenta, but of course, as we know in Python, everything is uh, lower case or everything is uh, case sensitive. So we need to uh, account for that as well. Uh, still allow the user to input the colors they want to and accommodate them as best we can. And then since this is a loop, we need a way to quit. So I'm gonna have zero colors is my secret command to exit. And now let's take a look at the code. So we've got pretty straightforward things. I did add um, this particular command in here from sys, there's an exit function that we're going to use because I want to do a graceful exit from a while loop. So I'm using the exit function from the sys library. And then we start to lay out our lists because the purpose of this exercise was really to go, um, was really two things. We want to learn loops and we want to learn lists. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create all kinds of lists throughout this program, uh, lists for color values, lists for what is a user input, all those kinds of things. And I had done this perhaps a year ago in the Pi class that Paul taught and really kind of went back and forth on using lists versus dictionaries. And if you've looked at some of the homework assignments, uh, thinking uh, Lori and Charlotte in particular, they're using dictionaries and there is some real value in dictionaries, but there's also some drawbacks. and the drawback that I have that I'm you know, struggling to get past with dictionaries 
is the fact that you cannot numerically index a dictionary. Um, and I can talk more about that later, but it makes it difficult to do, um, to loop through an entire dictionary. If you wanna read every single value in a dictionary and evaluate it, uh, it's a little more difficult because of the way um, it doesn't index uh, things numerically. So using lists, it's a little easier knowing that everything has a numerical index. Well, one of the advantages of dictionary is I can access things by name when I don't know the index. So it was, I believe it was Keith who suggested, why don't you set up a variable as a name and then point that to an index value in the list? So that's exactly what I've done. So through the duration of the program, I have red, GRN for green, BLU for blue. It's nice to use the three letter designations because then it's easier to code with. Um, but they're index 0, 1, and 2, so that anytime I have a list that's going to be a red, green, and blue value, um, I can just make sure that those are indexes 0, 1, and 2, and then I can always reference them by name. So that was a neat trick, and I uh, do thank you, Keith, for uh, pointing that out. There's a third value in the dictionary, which is being able to index um, an entire color by name. So for instance, I'll have uh, a color name of yellow, and then I'll have a red, green, and blue value. Um, so in my list, I've just added an additional into, or an additional element uh, that's element three of the name of the color. And you'll see as we walk through the program um, how we do that. So I left a few comments in here because I wanted to show some of the modifications I made uh, since my earlier program. Instead of instead of doing a red, green, and blue pin LED, I'm going to just put them in a list of LEDs and of course because we know that these are these are a name to number match with the variable it's going to be red green and blue um, same with the PWM object so now that I've taken my LED pins I can define my individual PWM objects using those pins and you notice now I'm referencing them as red green and blue so I don't have to use the numerical indexes. So that's kind of that cheat way of getting some of that value of a dictionary without actually using a dictionary. And then what I'm going is, because the PWM objects are in the list, I can just do a quick loop through the list and initialize each one, setting up the frequency and then the duty cycle of zero or off essentially. Um, then I set up my array of colors and I could have very easily just defined the array, but I thought it was a little more uh, a little more easy to read, easy to modify if I do them as an append. So I'm just creating an empty list first, and then I'm appending each color. So here you can see I'm using this index of zero is the red value, green is the uh, first value, blue is the second value, and then my actual string name of the color is my third value. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the while loop. So this is where our, our whole program is going to run in a, in a continuous loop. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to grab the input from the user. How many colors are we going to do? If it's zero, we're going to execute this exit function. And then we're going to, if we're not exiting, obviously we have a value that's um, going to give us a, a number of times through the loop. So we create a for loop for that. And I'm setting a valid color of zero because we want to um, we want to set the color to invalid first, and then we want the user to enter a color, and then we're going to validate it. And if we validate it, then we set the valid color to one. The advantage to that is I can set up a while loop. So I'm just going to continually ask the user for a valid color until I get one. That's how I did the... Uh, the effect of entering an invalid color. It said, nope, that's invalid, try again. And so this is just gonna loop until the user gives me a valid, no, uh, valid color. So here I'm requesting the first color number. I should point out the way I'm doing this is I'm using a, a string concatenation of plus instead of comma. So typically when you do a print statement and you're gonna concatenate strings, you use a comma. The problem with that is it puts a space between object number one and object number two. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to actually have, um, in this case, I want to have my number sign and my variable together with no space. 
So the way I can do that is use the plus symbol. Now, there is a downside to using the plus symbol in that you have to have a data type of string. You're doing a string concatenation. If you try to concatenate a string like enter color number and then I just put the variable, uh, it's going to fail because it needs to be a string type. It can't convert a string plus an integer. So I'm using string to convert it. The other thing I'm doing is my counter starts at zero. So if you enter a value of three, it's going to go zero, one, two. Well, that's not how the user sees it. The user sees it as one, two, three. So I'm displaying it as counter plus one. So entry zero is displayed as one. It's written into the list as zero, but it's displayed as one. Uh, and then three is written as, as two, and you get the idea. Then I have my checking for, I'm gonna move my mouse, sorry about that. Move this out of the way. Um, I have my checking to see, did we get blue? Oh, if we get blue, we're not gonna do that. And then I set the user color to null, and you'll see why I'm basically putting an invalid value in there um, that's going to force us back through the loop. And then if I do get my sudo give me blue, um, I'm going to pull in the user color of blue. Now this is kind of an interesting, um, this is kind of interesting here what I've done. So I've, I've checked everything in lowercase. So whatever I enter is being checked as lowercase, but it's being saved as exactly how the user entered it. And so I'm using, since I know the length of this uh, string is going to be X number of characters, and I know where blue is going to land if it matches, I'm actually taking those values, 13, 14, 15, and 16, concatenating them together and saying, that's my color blue. The reason I'm doing that is if I were to enter this as all uppercase or mixed case, I want to capture exactly how the user entered it and display it later on. So that's uh, maybe a little excessively coded to do that. That's kind of a silly thing, but um, when doing any sort of user interaction, I want to make it as comfortable for the user as I can, try to anticipate as many um, errors that the user might inject as I can, and try to give the user a very comfortable experience, not having to worry about what's going on in the code underneath. Now that I have my, my user color taken in, um, if I type sudo give me blue, it's going to be blue. If I type red, it's going to be red. If I type purple, it's going to be purple. How do we know if it's a valid color? How do we know if we have a, a, a definition for that, an RGB value for that? And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go through the entire array. So I'm going to loop through the my colors array. And I'm going to evaluate each and every one and say my color name, which is that third field in my list, um, <clears throat> my color name doesn't match. Does it match? Red is going to match. Green is going to match. Uh, yellow is going to match. Purple will not match. And so if it does match, it's going to take and add it to the user colors array. So I've got an array that I defined uh, back up here. I didn't really mention it, but there's an array up here that's empty. And this is the colors that we're going to cycle through when it comes time to finish entering the user data and actually print them out uh, to the LED. Move my mouse again, sorry about that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to append into that colors array. And again, you notice that we're using zero is red, one is green, two is blue, and three is going to be that uh, color in the same case that the user entered it. And then we're going to set the valid color to one because that's what breaks us out of that while loop. We accepted you know, if this is color number one, we've accepted color number one, we're going to go back up and now we're going to go into this for loop and we're going to do, I just hit something. Hold on. This is okay. um, we're going to go back up in this for loop and we're going to go to the next color that the user has requested. If it fails, we're going to print a message and then we're just going to come right back up to the top of this while loop because our valid color value hasn't been changed. It's still zero. So we're going to come up and we're going to say, okay, nope, try again. And it's going to be that same color because we didn't increment the counter. And we're just going to keep going through that sequence until the user gives us a valid color. 
now once we get down this far, we have determined the number of colors the user is going to enter and we've determined what those colors are. So now we can actually go through the motions of uh, printing them to the screen and writing them to the LED. So all I'm going to do is go through this, um, go through this new list that we've created of the user colors. And I'm going to print these out to the screen. I'm using the formatting tricks that I showed in an earlier lesson. However, this time I'm not doing the carriage return because I do want each one to be on its own line. If I just wanted to display the color being shown on the LED and only that color, then I would do the uh, trick of rewriting that end character so that it would keep wrapping around and write on the same line. This time I don't want to do that, but I do want to use the formatting to get the columns consistent. And you can see here as the program runs, the columns are consistent between the color, the RGB values. Then we're going to do kind of the things we've done before. I'm just going to take... Um, I'm going to read in from this list the red, green, and blue values for each color because, remember, we're in this for loop of looping through this array of user-supplied colors. For each color, I'm going to grab the R value, the G value, the blue value, divide it by 2.55 to get a percentage. Then we're going to do our conversion to exponential. Uh, then we're going to knock out the corner case. And then we're going to multiply them back to get our 0 to 65, 535 range and write them out to the LED. And then after it goes through this whole cycle, because we come up here and we're going to do this for each color. So if there's three colors, it's going to cycle, um, you know, first color, red, second color, green, third color, yellow, with a two second pause or lit two seconds. Um, and then it goes to the next color. And then when the it's done going through that cycle. It turns them all off, sets them to zero, prints a new line character, and then goes back up to that top and says, because we're still in that while loop, how many colors would you like or zero to exit? So that was a bit of a long-winded explanation. I hope I didn't lose too many people on that. But I did put a lot of work into this code, namely because of the user entry, the user validation. I wanted to make sure that the user's um, were somewhat accommodated so that just doing what should work doesn't break the code. And so that should be the end of lesson 15, but it's not. Um, there's going to be another video coming because if you remember at the very beginning, I talked about how lists have an advantage over dictionaries because they're numerically indexed. And there's some things you can do with lists that you can't do with dictionaries. I have since learned a few tricks with dictionaries. And I've been able to rewrite this program doing everything I wanted to using dictionaries instead of lists. And so I'm going to produce another video because I want to show you how I did that. Um, there's some really cool things about dictionaries that I've just recently learned and I want to share them with you. Until then, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe below if you like this video. And be sure to watch for part two of this lesson. For Simply Brian Enterprises, this is Brian. Thank you for watching.